Hello everybody, my name's Jim, and I'm going to be your guide around the world in this brand new channel called Every Day's a Holiday. We're going to go all over the calendar week by week, and we're going to see the celebrations, the commemorations, days of mourning and remembrance, silly holidays, hallmark holidays, and everything in between from all over the world. Since this channel began, well, not in January, we're going to start with the week we're on, May 1st through 7th. Let's go! The first week of May is a great time for holidays, and where should we start with the one you're probably all thinking about? May Day! So, what is May Day? May Day is one of the oldest holidays celebrated, going back thousands of years, going back before we even had a May on our calendar in the first place. There's actually three different holidays that count as a May Day celebration, one of which actually takes place on April 30th. First May Day is a festival that celebrates the midpoint of the season. The second celebrates and agitates workers around the world. The third celebrates the same to help drive devils out of southern Germany. So how did May Day start? Well, we gotta go back to ancient times for that. May Day, as uh, some of you probably know, started out as Belten. The ancient Celts, both in Central Europe and later after their migrations to Northwest Europe, including the British Isles, saw Beltane as the start of the light half of the year. In practical terms, this was also the day that herders would move their herds to summer pastures. Beekeepers would, and still often do, move their hives today, and farmers would usually plant turnips around this time. It was one of four holidays that took place at the midpoint of the season, and is still the best known besides Samhain in November. Samhain is better known as Halloween, but isn't nearly as popular in as many places except for mostly North America. We're spreading it though. People are starting to trick or treat in Britain, for example. We will get that cultural victory if it kills them. The second piece of Beltane was the bonfire that was lit after sundown. It was a symbolic fire meant to appease the spirits. People in Kennel would walk over the fires or even jump over the embers of the flame. Jack just jumped over a candlestick. These people and chows walked over bonfires. What would you prefer to have an earthly fire about? All household fires in sunlight would then be doused and relit using the bonfire. Once the fire burned out in the morning, people would rub the ashes all over themselves, their loved ones, and their animals for fertility and good health. On the Isle of Man, people would even breathe in the smoke because we didn't know that secondhand smoke was a thing yet. If young people paired up before sunset on May Day, they could court each other for six weeks before choosing whether or not to marry on Midsummer. If they married on the day, however, well, you know the old thing, marry in May, you have to pay alimony. Just Mary May rue the day. It's definitely one or the other. I'll have to check after I get done making this video. It was also believed that foals born on May Day would kill a person later in life, while a cow born on May Day would die of illness that year. If a robin showed up in your home, a close relative would die some by that year. Over in Wales, a similar holiday called Kalanha, or the first of summer, was celebrated. It also had bonfires and maypoles, don't worry, we'll get to the maypoles in a bit, and its main attraction was the battle between winter and summer, which is still done in a lot of Welsh communities today. Winter comes in with a rod made of blackthorn and a shield of wool stuck on it to represent snow. Summer then comes in dressed in new flowers and brandishing a wand of willow. They throw ferns at each other and they duel with branches until summer is ultimately triumphant and the Mayfair can finally begin. Yes, viewers. Mayfair is more than the UK replacement for the boardwalk in Monopoly. It is, in fact, a fair of drinking and dancing that many celebrate across Northwest Europe on May Day. When the Romans conquered Britain, they brought their own holiday with them called Floralia. Floralia started in the year 238 BCE as a commemoration of the completion of the Temple of Floralia in Rome. It was a Roman holiday, so there was a lot of debauchery going on, but apart from that traditional Roman debauchery, there were other, more wholesome customs such as the ceremonial releases of notoriously fertile animals like hares and goats into the wild, and crowds getting pumped with legumes to ensure fertility. Later on, the Christians arrived, and a new chapter in May Day's history began. Enter Volpurgis Night, the second May Day. The night of April 30th is also known as St. Volpurgis Eve or Volpurgis Night, May Day being their feast day. She was a missionary who helped spread Christianity to what's now Germany's southern states in the early 9th century. Her legends of chasing demons are likely allegories for her banishing pagan beliefs from the region. After her death, her relics and remains were moved to Eichstadt, Bavaria on the 1st of May, 870 CE. April 30th and May 1st, therefore, are days where Eichstadt Abbey and St. Volpurgis tomb are visited by thousands of pilgrims from all around the world. Pilgrims also purchase piles of St. Volpurgis oil, which is a holy oil believed to have been made from the woods in her tomb. 
But for most other people, Volpurgis Night is simply known for a bonfire. They don't involve cattle anymore, thankfully. Now, so often happens the church decided to take the old pagan Beltane tradition and put their own spin on it. This was the night when evil witchcraft was believed to be at its strongest, so the holy bonfires would keep it away from people. Even back then, many people would dress up like demons and wear masks and dance around the fires, which is a custom that still runs big throughout Northern Europe. And then, of course, there's the maple. The maple's origins aren't known, but much of Northern and Central Europe have had either maples or maple bushes for centuries. The earliest recorded maples were actually in the mid 14th century. The symbolism of the maple isn't exactly known either. Some claim that the maple is meant to be an Axis Mundi or a center of the world. Others see it as a continuation of Germanic tree worship. Maybe they just thought having a tall wooden pole to dance around and wrap ribbons around was a good idea for May Day. In which case, you know, there are worse traditions they could have. Remember what happened to the cattle? In Ireland, they didn't have made poles as much as made boughs. These are small trees like rowans or hollies that are covered with leftover Easter decorations. Traditionally, decoration is done by the oldest member of the household, and like many poles, they stay up until the end of the month. In the old region of Munster, which is mostly in Ireland's southern counties, children would, and still do, receive special gold and silver shiltars, which are balls used in the game of purling. And yes, this is pronounced shiltar, not slothar, not slothar. The other pronunciation can be a real challenge. Having the best made bow in the neighborhood was and is a source of pride and people would often just steal them from their neighbors in the past. Thankfully, you don't see that nowadays. Theft was actually so widespread that the French government banned many vows for a time in the 19th century in Ireland. And speaking of British bands, we must discuss the Puritans. They banned a lot. Including during the Reformation, maypoles were being reasoned superstition. And that's the main reason why we don't have maypoles or brows in North America, since both the US and Canada had a lot of Puritan influence in their early history. In 1660, when the British monarchy returned, Maypoles returned in full force with them. May Day also has May Queens and Kings, who symbolize both purity and greenery. The Queen by her white dress, the King, also known as the Jack of the Green, by his wicker costume covered in leaves that's reminiscent of the old pagan green man, and so all was well. That's pretty much the history of May Day. Oh, wait, yeah. Where are those workers marches? May 1st is indeed also Labor Day in a lot of nations. Now, those who have it on a different day, like Canada and the United States, will get their reasons explained as we get to them on the calendar. It's been International Workers' Day since the Second Communist International met and made it so in 1889. Stalin was meant to commemorate the 1886 Haymarket Riot, which took place in early May. If you don't know what the Haymarket Riot is, it's a really important moment in the history of workers' rights worldwide, so you should probably look it up. The communist origins of the holiday also led the Catholic Church in the 20th century to make May 1st the feast day of St. Joseph Artisan, which is the second feast day dedicated to Christ's Father and meant to replace another feast day dedicated to Joseph. So that's the history of May Day. How is it celebrated today? That's probably what you're wondering. Dancing on the Maypole or May Bow is still the main event throughout much of Europe, and if you're in Britain, it'll be probably accompanied by more dancers. Of course, that's may look silly to some, but this is an old English tradition dating back over 500 years. In the UK, Maypoles are generally more common in England and Wales, while Scotland prefers May Day or Ballpark's bonfires. It's also a school holiday in the UK, the only school holiday that doesn't have an accompanying day off because of a bank holiday. May 1st is actually a bank holiday in England and Wales, but not in Scotland or Northern Ireland. At Oxford and Durham, there are college choirs that sing spring madrigals as the sun rises. These concerts are also followed by people jumping off of bridges near where they sing. In Durham, they jump off of Pavin's Bridge, in Oxford, they jump off of Magdalen Bridge. Now, the police don't actually like this happening because the water under both bridges is only about two feet deep and it's a ten foot drop from the bridge, so there are injuries. Down in Cornwall, there's the Obbyos, or Hobby Horse Celebration, where a gigantic hobby horse dances along in the streets, the parks, and even people's back gardens in a lot of communities, surrounded by revelers and an accordion band. Up in Scotland's capital city of Edinburgh, many women will climb Arthur's Seat, which is a hill on the city's outskirts, and roll around in the grass to get dew on their skin. This is because there's an old Beltane tradition that says Beltane do can keep you from aging. Now, over on the other end of Europe, in the Balkans, May Day is called either Ermenden or Armenden. In Bulgaria, there's a tradition of jumping over small campfires while making noise to keep the snakes out of the field. 
While in Romania, May Day is known as Mugwort Day or Drunkard's Day. Men wear hats with mugwort flowers and people drink mugwort-infused wine as part of the Feast of Lamb and New Cheese. In both countries, it's considered bad luck to go out into the fields and work on this day. Going further west, Italy and Spain have more musical traditions that share a few common traits between them. In Italy, primarily the north, you'll find the Maggie, who will sing flattering and auspicious verses for you in exchange for food and wine. Spain, meanwhile, is most of their May Day stuff on May 3rd, the Feast of the Cross, which is actually in September, but I've got another video coming up that's going to tell you all about that. But anyway, in Spain, people write songs and make handmade sculptures while others dance around the maple. Communities have contests for the best songs and sculptures, and they give out lots of nice prizes. In France, there's a unique custom that this is the one day of the year that people can sell lilies of the valley without having to pay taxes on them. This custom goes back to 1561, when King Charles IX gave lilies of the valley to his favorite ladies of the court. Today, it's seen as something you give to your special someone. Over in Germany, particularly in the Rhineland states of Germany, it's a custom for men to give small maypoles to others on May Day. If it's from an admirer, the poles will have bright multicolored ribbons, while a white ribbon or white string pole can mean disinterest or outright hostility. Women will make hearts out of roses or rice and put them in front of houses of people they like. In leap years, the roles are reversed, where women put the maypoles up and men make the white rice or rose hearts. And then, of course, there's lots of marches and demonstrations for workers' rights across the globe. Now, for us Americans, as I said earlier, our Puritan past means we didn't get a lot of the May Day celebrations, but we do have an old fading tradition known as the May Basket. I actually made May Baskets when I was younger. All you have to do is make a basket out of construction paper, fill it with flowers or candies, go to someone's house, knock on the door like this, and run away as quickly as possible. If you're caught, you are the recipient of a kiss.